Studio community. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you to my tutorial series. First of all, today I want to thank you for your patronage, and I really feel like this is a community, and I really appreciate all of the comments that you have provided in my videos over the past year or so. I thought I would create a tutorial on your tips that you gave me in the comment sections of my videos. And so, this is six viewer tips I was too dumb to know. Now to begin with, I have Milica set up in a scene that I've already used. It's from the video on the emissive lighting tutorial. And I showed you in this video how we could add a picture to the computer screen. And so we went through the steps of adding this picture. And it's just a picture of Milica looking at herself um, on the computer screen. And she's looking at a computer. This is kind of my avatar that I use for a lot of things. And so I went through the steps of how to add this and then how to add an emissive light to the computer screen so that the computer screen is bright, kind of shining on our Milica character. And so to do this, I showed you that we went to the Surface tab, and then under the Surface tab, we select the laptop screen, and under Base, we just add the picture we want in base color, and then I told you to scroll down and use glossy color. And then we added an emissive light and we added the picture to the emissive color light. Now, the big problem I had in that video that I mentioned was that to get the computer screen bright enough, it would bleach out our picture. And so in that video, I used GIMP and I kind of rendered twice, one with a lower brightness on the screen and so I could take that picture and then I added it to the brighter screen so that this picture here wasn't all bleached out. Now I got a tip that said we need to add our picture not only to the emissive color tab but also down here to the luminance tab. So before we do that let's just go to iRay mode and let's see what the screen looks like. Now it is important to notice that my luminance is set to 15,000 and so you can see it's not that bright. I could actually brighten up this by making the luminance even brighter. So let's do that. Let's try and get this bleached out look. Okay, now we have a bleached out look. So I'm going to take this, we're going to go to the Luminance tab, I'm going to go to Browse and I'm going to find my avatar picture, which happens to be right here. We're going to add that to the screen. Let's see if this gets rid of a little bit of that bleaching. Oh, and it does. Now, I have experimented with this a little bit. It's not perfect, but it does help quite a bit. All right, so that is tip number one. Now, tip number two comes from several viewers who noticed in my background and screen update tutorial that I was wrong. There is a way to delete a background. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to stay on this scene with Milica, but I'm going to go up to um, perspective view and uh, we're going to add a background. And so in the background video, we went to environment and then this background, we can add any background we want to. So I'm just gonna do that just to show you. So see, now I have a background in the scene and we talked about backgrounds. And I said that I couldn't figure out a way to delete the background. I'm like, once you have a background, you, you know, we're pretty much screwed because you can't get rid of the background. Well, I got several comments from all of you that showed me how to do this. And it's really simple and I feel like a dork for not knowing this, but just go to backdrop under your environments, go to backdrop and then hit none and it gets rid of it so much easier. Okay. And then you can of course add a different one or render with a PNG and have no background. 
So my next tip comes from a mistake I made in the can't find your prop, do this video. And in this video, I showed you how you can locate a prop that you don't know where it is in your scene by hitting control F. So you would select whatever the object is, perhaps go to your perspective view camera. And then if you can't find a prop, like for example, the laptop, you would select the laptop and then just hit control F and it finds the prop for you. Pretty cool. But there is another way you can do this and that is by using these little buttons located up in the upper right corner. So if I have the laptop selected and I hit this little box with the plus sign in it, it just takes me right to the prop. And what's really cool is if I hit the arrow that's underneath it, it will reset the camera back to the default. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, for the fourth tip, we go to rendering. This comes from my render quality settings video. And I was talking about how to set up your scene with your render settings. And, you know, this is an evolving process, but I did get a tip here that um, when I'm talking about the render quality, the convergent ratio, the max time, max samples, that kind of thing, I did mention that your rendering converged ratio is set to 95% by default. And we can change that so that um, when your iterations get to a certain percent, it'll just end your render. But I did get a tip that says, do not go to 100%, because if you go to 100%, it will take forever for it to render. So you can put it at 99% or 95 at the default, but if you put it at 100, it takes too long to render. So that's just another little render tip. Tip number five also comes from one of my render videos. This one is fixing your noise in your renders with GIMP. And noise can also be fixed by the denoiser option in your render settings. And I think I'm gonna make a tutorial about this because I need to play around with it a little bit more. I have to be honest, I haven't really used the denoiser too much in Daz Studio, but I have had some issues lately with render times and trying to get render times at a reasonable rate because I've been making a lot of pictures lately to try and get um, some comics finished. So I think I'm gonna play with this, but if you scroll down to the purple area, you'll have this denoiser, and the denoiser is always set to off, but if you click it on, and then you can click the post denoiser enable on, you're gonna have this slide bar where you can tell Daz Studio where in your iterations you want the denoiser to start. So it's defaulted at eight. So once the iterations start, when it gets to eight, which is almost immediately, it's gonna start denoising. Now what you have to realize is denoising makes things soft. So if you want to keep sharper edges in your render, you're going to want to up this number. So you can up it to 50, 100, 1000, and then when it gets to those iterations, it's going to start softening the scene, and this should speed up your render. So I'm going to have a video about this coming out soon because I am pretty interested in it, but this was a suggestion to speed up your renders. All right, and finally, tip six also is from our render settings video, and it talks about this thing called pixel filter. And pixel filter is defaulted to Gaussian, but I was told to also play with this and change the Gaussian settings to a, a different setting, and that may speed up or slow down your renders. We also can change this pixel filter radius, and that also is supposed to speed up render times. So again, I think I'm gonna have to play around with this. I haven't had a chance to really do that, but I'm gonna play around with it until um, I get something a little bit different and then perhaps make a tutorial on this pixel filter. 
All right, everyone. So this is going to conclude our tutorial for this week. I'm going to set up a render to make a thumbnail for it. And uh, until next time, I hope you have happy rendering. Keep sending me those comments. Like, subscribe if you haven't done that yet. I really appreciate all of you viewers. And until next time, have a great day. Mm -hmm.